Hello and welcome to the fifth instalment of my series of videos about colour for Emma Connects. And this month I am going to be talking about a colour that lots of people don't even think is a colour. I'm going to be talking about white. Now I've always found it really fascinating the way that people confuse uh, the white and the colourless. So we consistently call colourless things white. So you know, white vinegar, white spirit, white diamonds, white light. And we consistently think of white things as being colourless. So let me give you just one example. Here's a screen. Most people would call it blank or empty, but of course it's actually full of white. I think all of these ideas, all of these confusions, are shaped by an assumption that goes back thousands of years, and that is that white is pure, so pure that it's even pure of colour. Now, many religions around the world associate white and white garments specifically with spiritual and moral purity. In much of the West, brides wear white dresses to convince everyone they're chaste. And in many countries around the world, Doctors wear white coats to prove how clean and noble they are, when actually we know that white doctor's coats are prolific carriers of disease, which is why they're no longer worn within the NHS. Our faith in whiteness extends to every aspect of our lives. We paint our walls white. We tile our bathrooms white. We buy white crockery. We sleep in white bedsheets. We use white toothpaste and white moisturiser and we swallow white tablets. We bleach our flour white. We decolourise sugar until it becomes white. We polish rice until it becomes white. And we add white pigments, titanium dioxide, to dairy products and baked goods and loads of other kinds of foods because we think that when they're white, they are more pure, they are more clean, and they're ultimately better for us. Now, European culture is, I think, particularly obsessed with whiteness. And I've often wondered whether that's because of, a, of an ancient geological accident. Because 150 million years ago, the land of what is now Europe was submerged beneath a tropical sea called the Tethys Ocean or the Tethys Sea. And when that sea eventually receded, it deposited all over the land that is now Europe um, limestone or chalk. It's one of the reasons why we have so much chalk in this country. But then, about 50 million years later, about 100 million years ago, uh, tectonic plates uh, on the south of Europe started to collide. And under immense heat and pressure, they turned that limestone into marble. And that is why the Mediterranean area, Greece, Italy and so on, are so blessed with white marble. And it may well be why so much of ancient civilization, whether it's Greek temples or Roman statues, are made from marble. Now, in the Renaissance and during the Enlightenment, many theorists argued that one of the reasons why ancient Greek and Roman art was so good, was so important to follow, was that it was predominantly white, even though we now know originally Greek and Roman statues were brightly coloured. And actually, people began to claim that, that good taste, good taste itself, uh, favoured things that were plain, simple, muted, and very often white. And I think those standards still persist with us even today you know, from an Apple computer or Apple iPhone, all the way through to shops that specialise in selling white products. Now, the most controversial aspect of the European preoccupation with whiteness, of course, relates to skin colour. Now, it's interesting that actually Europeans didn't think of themselves as white until they started to meet darker skinned peoples around the world who frequently commented on their pale complexions. But in the 18th and 19th centuries, Europeans embraced the term for themselves, partly because it allowed them to compare themselves to the ancient statues from ancient Greece that they admired so much, and partly because white's connections to virtue and purity made them feel superior to every other group of people on the planet. 
Um, but as we all know, if you actually look closely, white people aren't literally, physically, visually white. They, like everyone else, belong to a sepia spectrum of skin colours that unites all humans on the planet. Anyway, next month in my penultimate episode in this series, I will be talking about the colour purple.